Welcome to Tuesday. My name is George Gary and I'm coming to you from my kitchen in Southern California. And uh, I've uh, been doing these since uh, March and I didn't realize I'd be doing them so long, but hey, you guys are having a good time. I'm having fun. I'm cooking dinner every night this way. And uh, except like tonight we're doing um, uh, um, shortcakes and that's all Neil's getting for dinner. So it's gonna be shortcakes and sauces but uh, we've got some other things. I, uh, but I was uh, teaching all over the country before this started up, so now I'm just doing it out of my kitchen. And uh, once in a while you can see me on the morning shows at uh, CBS San Diego, and Home and Family, when they come back, I'll be up there at uh, Universal. And I like doing the Universal show, it's kind of interesting because while you're there, the tram goes by and they think you're somebody. And so you kind of wave at them like, I'm somebody, but they don't know who you are. But uh, I had one, uh, I do food tours. I did one food tour of Italy one year and this little grandmother, she couldn't remember my name as George. So I finally said, like George Clooney, you know, George Clooney bought a place in uh, Lake Cuomo that year. And she says, oh, George Clooney, okay. So the next year I come into her restaurant and she screams, George Clooney. And she gives me this big, everybody in the whole restaurant stopped thinking I was George. And then they looked at it and they went, oh, it's just an American. But anyway, my George Clooney, I mean, if she squinted, I might look like him. What do you think, Neil? Absolutely. Uh, that's Neil, our cameraman today. Neil, say hi to everybody. And uh, he'll be uh, on camera on Friday, and uh, hopefully he doesn't spit things out like he did this past week, because those uh, shrimp puffs I'm were so hot. That, that was so hot. That, uh, well, the you, outside you know was cool, and the yeah, sauce was a, like lava. You took a, the first bite, and it was, mmm, these are good. And then you took a big bite, and then that sauce got you. So, yeah. so we're going to do some shortcakes, and both are very similar. One's an all-American shortcake, and then we're going to do a lemon shortcake with some lavender. And uh, it has some cinnamon too in it. And if you don't care for the cinnamon, you can take that out and change it up. But it's all by hand. If you could do a pie crust, which a lot of people can't, they worry about it. Shortcakes are just as easy. Before I start, we've got our pans and um, you can do shortcakes like biscuits if you want, but I'm gonna do them like this in that nine inch rounds. And you need a paper on the bottom. And the very first week I did this and um, I just showed everybody, but I'm going to show you again, just in case you weren't here the very first week. You, all you do is you keep folding the paper. There's one fold, one fold, and you're going to, this is going to be your point of the, and this is parchment paper that uh, now they sell it at the grocery store, but this is a whole sheet of it. So just like that, like that, like that. So then you take your pan, take it about in an eyeball, like that. Right in the middle point, right? Point, yep. And then you're gonna cut that this way. I've already put a little spray in there, just a little bit to stick the paper. And there is our circle, perfect. And then like I did last time, and Neil said, if I tell the same joke, it's like the old man that tells you the same joke over and over. The other piece of paper, because we are still on watch that we can't get um, uh, toilet paper, in case you go to the mall, because they're opening up, you can take that with you if you need it. The first time I did this in class, everyone gasped. So I do it every time. I like to let people gasp. I yeah. can't believe I said it. <laughs> All right, so our shortcake, everything you should have in your pantry if you bake at all. We've got uh, flour and uh, salt, and then we've got baking powder, cream of tartar, and then we've got granulated sugar in there. So we're gonna take all of our dry ingredients first and place it into a bowl. And I'm just using a blending fork. Now, if you don't have a blending fork, you can use a large fork, just like that. Then we have butter, eggs, or egg, and the butter is on the colder side. And then we have whole milk. I use whole milk because uh, it just has the added fat in there that you need for your shortcake. So shortcakes, biscuits, pies, scones, they're all made about the same way. On Friday we have, no, tomorrow, no, Thursday, we have cherry chocolate scones we're making with fresh cherries that we picked over the weekend. I feel so 
I picked them myself. I'm almost done with all my canning for the year. I have uh, peach jam to do. That's my, the last of it for the year. But uh, I did uh, strawberry, blackberry, raspberry, and then uh, pickles. Those should be ready in a couple more weeks, maybe another week. All right, Neil, do a close up of it so everybody can see what that looks like. And see, it's just, now we're gonna take our egg and I break it up a little bit. And our whole milk. I'm not gonna put all the milk in. Take a little, I'll hold back some. And that is because you just never know the moisture content of your flour. And if you're in a dry climate, you'll need a lot more moisture. Excuse me. Yeah, I'll take that little bit of milk. And now, like I said, you can roll these out if you want, like biscuits, and uh, make them individual. I like to do them into a nine inch round pan. And I'm trying to get all the dry mixture. So here's our pan. And I will take this is all in here. And if I got a little bit dry this here, I'll just add to it. Just like that. Perfect. I'm gonna keep this bowl because I'm gonna do my next one in the same wrap in the same bowl. Meanwhile, take this, pat it down to a nice layer, and just like that. And there is our, now what you can do is you can brush it if you want at this point with uh, a little bit of butter and sugar. I'm trying to make sure it's all about the same thickness. But there you go. Okay, that'll go in the oven. And now we're gonna do the next one. And it's about the same. Uh, thing, except we're going to add a little bit of uh, um, flavoring to this with the lemon. All of our dry ingredients, again, we'll just put those in here. This one we have some cinnamon in. We've got that milk and the butter, and we have lavender. Now make sure when you get the lavender that you get lavender that's food grade lavender at, from a spice store. And you want to break it up with your fingers like this, and you'll get a lot more of the lavender, dry lavender oils. We have a lavender plant right outside the garage here, and uh, you could use that if it's not um, any chemicals on it. But you kind of, down in San Diego, there's a lavender field, and this was French lavender that I got. So we're gonna blend all the dry first. And here we've got lemon. So remember our microplane, we go across this way, one swoop across. We don't want to go twice. And we, uh, you can smell the lemon oils. And these are small lemons, so I'm gonna probably just use two. And then I'll juice them later if I have something that I need lemon juice for. <coughs> Boy, they're <it's> intoxicating. <coughs> mm. So I don't go this way, I go this way. Because once you hit the white pith, it's bitter and it kind of changes all the oils and you don't get the strong aroma of the lemons that you want, the lemon flavor. So here we go. Then we'll blend that. So we have all of our dry ingredients pretty much in here. And we'll add oh, butter like I did last time. Like I said, this is a little bit different. This has some lavender and the lemon and a little bit of cinnamon. You can pull that cinnamon out and not use it and just make it lemon lavender. And then We've got our egg, beat that up a little bit. And our milk. You can use heavy cream too if you want. You don't have to stick with just milk, but at least whole milk. 
I've uh, done buttermilk too. The buttermilk ones taste good. And we'll blend that all up. And let's see if we need a little bit more milk on this one. Sometimes with uh, the cinnamon, it pulls all the moisture out. But it's looking okay. And we'll just keep blending. And then we will put it in our pan like we did the last one. Make it pretty even, and then we'll place that in the oven. And in the meantime, oh, that smells good. There we go. There is our second pan of shortbread. Now, when I grew up, shortbread for strawberry shortbread was these things that were spongy with a hole in it. And they were kind of like sponge cake. And that's what I grew up thinking shortbread was. Until I started getting into the industry, it was like, nah, that's not even close. It's more of a biscuit that is a shortbread. And uh, you don't want to have those spongy cakes. They don't taste very good. And what they do is they pull a lot of the liquid off of the berries that you're making. So there's our second one. We'll be back to make our fillings. Okay, our shortbreads are gonna go into the oven and then when they come out, we wanna have our sauce ready. We're doing two kinds of sauces. We're gonna do a hot sauce or a warm sauce, which will be a fresh raspberry sauce. Well, these are cooking a little bit, so I've got fresh raspberries in here. I'm smashing them down a little bit. And then what we have is a cold berry berry cherry sauce. I had to add some cherries in from each one of these little guys I picked and plucked and did all the stuff too. But first our, our raspberry sauce. Um, the berry berry cherry sauce will only last 24 hours. You need to cook it. If you don't cook it, then you're gonna have a problem with um, it going bad and then you'll get uh, um, the berries have been broken down by slicing them and all the juices will come up. So you could get some uh, different bacteria that you don't want. So. What I have is some berry, uh, raspberries in here and some sugar. And we're gonna let that cook for a sec. And uh, so the sugar kind of, uh, kind of uh, dissolves. And uh, then meanwhile, we have cornstarch and a little bit of cold water. And we're gonna blend this together. So it's milky. We keep the fork right there. That'll remind me to stir it again because I might have to before I add it to this. Now we're gonna take a little bit of citrus. Any kind of citrus works. We had some lemon, so I'll do some lemon. But you just need a little citrus oil in here and it works really nice. And you can uh, take a spoon and you can tell if all the sugar is gone or it's evaporated, cooked. Just by looking at it, you can see the granulation is gone. So Neil's gonna do a close up because this is how fast this goes. We've got the berries and the sugar and the juices. Now remember I've got my cornstarch here. Little lemon is in there too. I'm gonna take this while it's bubbling and thicken it. See how thick it gets pretty quick? and you need to cook the flour taste out of it. So you do a little bit at a time. You can see that's perfect thickness that I feel. Just like that. Let that come up to a boil again. And there is our sauce. Now what you can do is you can strain it before you thicken it if you want to get the seeds out. I feel, let me, Put this into this pourable so you can see it. Oh, that's beautiful. And this is the same kind of sauce that I make when I'm doing ice cream sundaes. So I will, uh, let me get a rubber spatula to clean that. Pan out. But I will uh, use this sauce when I'm doing um, hot fudge sundaes. We did uh, a couple weeks ago, we did that 
vanilla and the fudge sauce. And I just made some raspberry jam, so I use that too. So you could do either way. But this is a, a really nice sauce. So we've got that. There's, oh, I almost forgot one of the most important parts of this is to add some chambord. If you have kids, do this. If you have kids, you want them to go to bed early, do it this next way. Now, you just want a few tablespoons of black raspberry liqueur, and that is a chambord, and there it goes, just in there. And uh, it's very tasty. So there we go. So that is what our sauce is. And then we're gonna do our cold sauce, which is, can't make this recipe, you got problems. It's that easy. All you do is if you've got all, uh, you got raspberries, cherries, and strawberries, and I have them sitting here for a minute, and I just take a, a masher, just a little bit, to mash them all. Now, if they aren't sweet, add a few tablespoons of sugar, but if they're sweet, you should be fine. And these strawberries were so sweet, and the cherries were really nice and ripe, so. And now I'll take some port, or you can do some chambord also. This is a berry liqueur, and we'll add that in there. And there is your second sauce. So we'll put these together, and we'll put it on top of our shortcake when the shortcake comes out, and we'll be back. Okay, our shortcake is out of the oven. It's a little hot, but I'm going to show you how I invert it. And uh, you need uh, two cardboards about the same size. There's the pan, over the pan. And like I said, it's a little warm. And so I'll do that. And it pops down. And oh, asbestos hands. Paper. Now, if you want it to just be on the cardboard like this, put another cardboard and flip it. Or, if you want to show it for presentation, this, get your hand underneath it, and go back. And there you have your lemon one, and here is our regular All-American. So there we go, let's cut a piece out of the lemon one. And now it is crumbly, because that's how it should be. It's a, like a biscuit, a shortcake. And we have our raspberry to go on. Raspberry chambord sauce. And then that's our berry berry cherry sauce. Remember, you want to eat that berry berry cherry sauce within a day. And you can see the insides. Neil, you want to do a close up of our. And then. If you want to whip some whipped cream, you can, or always have a can of whipped cream close by. And there you go. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the little shortcake. Make some for uh, the berry season because it's coming right up. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care and thanks and have a great day.